Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, talking about what causes it, the symptoms, how you treat it, and what should you do if it keeps coming back. Let's start with the basics. Uh, BPPV, it's a mouthful. It stands for benign, meaning it's not cancerous, it's not something terrible, uh, although it can feel terrible. Uh, positional, meaning it only happens when your head's in a certain position. Paroxysmal, meaning it happens in little episodes, it's not constant. Uh, and then uh, the vertigo, which means a illusory or a sense of your moving or the environment's moving even when you're not. Okay. Now, the definition, that's that. Uh, the anatomy involved, this can be kind of complex, I'll put a picture up here, but I'm going to explain this in lay layperson's terms. Uh, it involves these things called semicircular canals. Now you've got three on each side. There's a front one, anterior, a back one, posterior, and then a, a horizontal one. These canals, what they do when you turn your head, the canals sense that uh, because there's a real thick fluid gel inside those canals. And when you move, the fluid moves and it deflects a little receptor at the end of the canal and it tells your brain that you're moving. Now, another part of that vestibular system, the inner ear, are these things called uh, uh, otoliths. Now, there's, there's a saccule and a utricle. Now, what they do is uh, they sense linear motion, right? Moving up and down, side to side, forward and backward. So not angular movements, but straight up and down and side to side. And now, they're sensitive to gravity. And the reason they're sensitive to gravity is there's this little structure in there that kind of looks like a, a hairbrush with a big thick gel in the top. And there's these crystals embedded in it. It gives it kind of a, a top heavy weight. And those crystals are made of calcium carbonate. And it's those crystals that are the problem in BPPV. What happens is, and I'll explain why in just a second, uh, one of those little crystals can break loose or get dislodged. And then it makes its way out of the area where the otoliths are, called the vestibule, and it can fall into one of these canals. Now these canals are only open on one end. So if a crystal falls in and gets around the curve, it goes to the bottom of that canal and it's going to mess things up. Because when you move certain directions, that crystal is going to move inside this canal where there's this heavy, thick fluid, and it will make your brain think that you're moving when you're not. And that's what can give you the symptoms that we associate with BPPV, like the dizziness and the vertigo and the nausea and sometimes the vomiting, right? So those are the structures uh, involved. And when, again, when this little thing breaks loose, this crystal called an otoconia, breaks loose and gets into one of these canals, usually it happens in the posterior canal. So what that means is you usually only feel it if you were to lay your head back or roll over in bed, something like that. That will trigger this because that little crystal will start falling through the, the place in the canal where it can fall and it deflects the little receptor at the end of the canal and your brain thinks you're moving but you're not and that's what causes the symptoms. Now who gets BBPV? Well, it's more common in people over 50, kind of across the board. It's definitely more common in women than men. Now, again, the symptoms of BBBV are, you know, during the little attacks of it, the episodes of it, you definitely can get uh, uh, nausea so bad that you vomit. You get the sense of rotation, either that you're moving or the room is moving. Uh, you get dizziness. And kind of what the kind of characteristics of BBBV is that it usually the attacks only last for, you know, maybe a minute or so. Uh, and they could kind of come and go, right? Um, that's what makes it paroxysmal. Now, even between the episodes, though, a lot of people that have BBBV can have feelings of disequilibrium and just kind of like not quite right, and they're not quite steady. And that could be due to the fact that even if you had it treated, you didn't get treated correctly, or it's happening because there's this canal that's basically malfunctioning and your brain and your vestibular system are trying to adjust to this faulty information. I'll talk more about that in just a second. So how do we test for BBBV? It's very simple. Uh, you go to an ENT or someone like myself and we put these goggles on you called uh, uh, VNG or VOG where we kind of put your eyes in darkness and then we look at them and see what happens to your eyes when we tilt your head back in a certain position. Now that test is called the Dix hall pike position. And basically we're trying to see, hey, when we put you back in this position, do your eyes start to get this thing called nystagmus? Now nystagmus is a, 
uh, involuntary rhythmic jerking of the eyes, and it, it will look a certain way if this if BPPV is what you have. Now you can get nystagmus uh, when you're having these attacks. Sometimes you can see it, and sometimes if you if the person like really focuses on something, it kind of suppresses it and you can't see it. But when you do the right test uh, using VNG or VOG goggles, uh, you can see it pretty easily. That's pretty much the test. Now, what causes BPPV? Well, there's kind of a longish list here, but some of the more you know, common causes that the research seems to think is what's happening is number one is uh, trauma, right? So you get a whiplash or you get a head injury or some kind, and it can literally physically dislodge one of these crystals. Uh, having your head back for a long time, like in a dentist chair or like uh, in, a, in a stylist chair, that can sometimes do it. Um, high intensity aerobics, like something you know, like where you're really you know, jerking your head around or there's high impact or like you know, mountain biking on a really rough trail. All those are have a kind of a similar mechanism where you're like physically shaking your head and the, the little otoconial uh, crystal uh, comes out. Now the other thing that can do it are inflammatory disorders in the inner ear like labyrinthitis uh, or vestibular neuritis, both of which are uh, inflammatory conditions in the inner ear. Now, the other thing that can do, uh, that can cause BPPV, or is at least associated with it, is having an autoimmune condition in general. Now, not necessarily an autoimmune condition that attacks your inner ear, but just having a generalized one, such as rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto, something like that. Uh, the inflammatory nature of that condition seems to be associated with how these little crystals get dislodged off of where they, uh, where they belong. Uh, migraines might also be uh, associated with it. And then there's another category called idiopathic, which means we don't know. Although sometimes I wonder if that's really what the case is. Uh, in my practice over the last 20 years, uh, a lot of people with BPPV, or at least recurring BPPV, are people that have inflammatory disorders. So what is the treatment? Uh, treatment for BPV is basically moving this crystal out of the canal where it doesn't belong and moving it back into the vestibule where the otoliths are, where over a few weeks, it will probably be dissolved or reabsorbed. How do they do that? They do this uh, procedure called an Epley's maneuver, which is sometimes called a repositioning maneuver. And once they do that, about half the people that get an Epley's maneuver, uh, the BPPV recurs. Now, there's some reasons for that. Uh, Sometimes when it recurs, you'll get to do these things called Brandt Daroff exercises, which is kind of a home way of trying to get the crystal back where it belongs, and sometimes that works. But for you people <laughs> that have had PPP before uh, and it's come back, there's some things to consider. The first thing is um, this thing called post maneuver recalibration therapy or post repositioning maneuver rehab. And the reason is, earlier I mentioned it, uh, your system can kind of get acclimated to having faulty information coming from one of these canals, and then when you take the crystal out, it's still got this faulty information, so it's uncalibrated. So usually you need some fairly simple rehab that a, a good vestibular rehab therapist or someone like myself who's trained in vestibular rehab uh, can do for you, and that's more of a a neurological circuit problem than it is anything else. And that's a fairly easy thing to, to, to diagnose and a fairly easy thing to treat. The other thing that can happen if you're getting recurring BBVV is you've got some kind of immune system problem that either you know about or don't know about and it needs to be corrected, it needs to be regulated. Now I've got a, a whole bunch of videos on autoimmune stuff, you can look those up. But basically, people that have reoccurring BPPV often have an undiagnosed autoimmune problem or an autoimmune problem that just isn't being treated correctly. So immune system regulation is really, really key for those people. Uh, the last thing that I'll mention is there is definitely an association between vitamin D deficiency and recurring BPPV. So you gotta make sure, if you're one of these people that's you know the 50% where the BPPV is recurring, you gotta find someone that can look at all those things for you, right? And again, I got a bunch of videos on these topics. I think I talk about some of these things. Uh, so that's the basics of BPV, BPV, and that is one of the the most common cause, I should say, of vertigo. I got a lot more videos we can talk about of some less common, but stuff I see a lot that causes people to have vertigo, dizziness, and balance problems. Uh, and I'll see you next time.